<clears throat> all right, now that we got all of the formalities out of the way, DTDT, DT, share with us, share with the community, what was your drive? What drew you to your passion for building generational wealth and wealth preservation for you and your family? Yeah, Lady L, um, I believe in anybody's life, it comes to a point where they might say you're tired and of being tired, just sick and tired of being tired. And, um, you know, I made some promises to my wife to have her retired uh, by a certain age. And, you know, you're doing all you can. You're trying to move up in certain uh, jobs and situations. And it just, you know, sometimes it seems like you're hitting your head against a brick wall and you have to find another avenue. And I know the Bible says, you know, it's, uh, it's a poor father that doesn't leave an inheritance to his kids. And it takes me um, to my grandfather. You know, he came from the South. Uh, he was born in 1931, came from the South, went up North, uh, did what he had to do. Eight kids, put them all through school, uh, ended up owning his own oil trucks, Willie J. Terry and son. Um yeah, and um, ended up owning the, ended up eventually owning the property that we stayed in when I was a kid and the um, a building next door. And to see his, yeah, to see, um, um, even though he's gone, he set up his, you know, his wife to be taken care of, my grandmother to be taken care of. And to see his kids, my dad, you know, be an electrician and go on his own business, his son, uh, my uncle is a detailer. He owns his own business after driving oil trucks and things of that nature. And just seeing the production in my family, it was like, I got to do more. There's more in me, you know? So sometimes you got to just step out your comfort zone. You know, we might deal with some self-esteem, some things from the past, but it just came to the point where there was no more excuses. And with my children growing up and knowing that, you know, they're about to hit high school. They're about to be called hit college. I didn't want to have to ask anybody permission uh, to be there for my children. Absolutely. I didn't want there to be any type of hesitation that I couldn't afford what they needed. Mm -hmm. And it was never been about glitz and glamour, uh, but it's about being able to spend time with those that I love. Um, yes. If you, you might be in the city, if you like me, Lady Ella, I have cousins, family, but everybody just sort of gets caught up with you. They have kids or the hustle and bustle of everyday life. And before you know it, Lady L, you're like, man, I, they they like 20 minutes away, but I haven't seen them in like two months. Right? Oh, my God. You, you know, crazy? you get in those situations. And, you know, and unfortunately, you start seeing um, loved ones passing away that are older. And I still have aunts here. And I'm like, I want to spend time with my aunts. Yeah. You know, I've lost um, my mother, my grandfather, my grandmother and other family members and they just get to a point where you're like, you know, if I want to fly to Texas to go chill my aunt for a week mm -hmm. to build those memories, then I just want to go and do those things. And with my kids being in track on scholarship, praise God, yes. um, you know, if they awesome. need, they need me to fly or do whatever, you know, to get homesick. So that started hitting my mind. Like I need to be able to go there. If I need to sit there for a week, with them just to know that I'm in the city with them mm -hmm. to give them that comfort. So they know they don't leave school because of homesick or that anxiety or that pressure is just a situation that I wanted um, to be in. Yeah. And um, that, that's what yeah, so, that wealth preservation does. It, it gives you the ability to do the things you've always wanted to do, but with the restrictions mm -hmm. of work and different things, we don't get to do the things we want to do. So when you can position yourself, financially to be able to leisurely go and do the things that you need to do to be there for your family. That is so important. And those memories with your children, they're going to remember that and that's going to stick with them. And they'll begin to do that same habits generationally as well. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's important. That is so awesome. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Tell me oh, some know, of the family. other arenas that you are interested in as far as being able to uh, bring an education of generational wealth and wealth preservation to our youth? Yeah, so one of the biggest things that was introduced to me was forex trading. 
Um, I remember being on my job with one of my friends, his name Ben Rogers, a uh, good friend. Uh, he stepped, He said, can you watch the class just for a second? And he stepped out. And I was like, yeah, I got you. I'll cover it. And then he came back and he was like, hey, I want to show you something. And he was practicing, I guess, on his demo account. And he showed me how much he would have made. And I was like, you know, what is this? I was like, you just did that? But, you know, it was more than we were going to make working for eight hour days and even with some overtime on it. Mm-hmm. So he sort of introduced me to the 4X platform. Um, and with that, I signed up with the mob on the Taz Smith, great trader, um, fishing not only in the game when it comes to that. And just pursuing the Forex trading, um, stock and options trading, uh, things of those natures. I started, started diving in. I mean, um, we can make excuses or we can get beyond ourselves and try something that we've never done before. Absolutely. Uh, because at that time, Lady L, you know you got two choices. You already know what it's going to be if you don't do anything. Right. So why not try to find out what's on the flip side if you try to pursue something? Absolutely. So Forex is, um, was, was and is my pursuit. And it was more or less, um, I seen independence in it. Mm-hmm. It wasn't something that I could do, but it could also be a family bonding tool for me yeah. um, to teach my son. You know, I'm like, okay, if you're 12 and we learn this together for the next four years, you know, this is a tool that you'll have by the time you're 18. And you can trade on your own when my kids are in college. They go to college. If they need money, they don't have to ask me. Man. You know, it's something yeah. that can just a skill. <laughs> you know, it's a skill. They say carpenters yeah. are always in demand, electrician, construction workers. This is what the mindset of something that I could teach my sons, my daughters, um, some independence, a way that you don't have to go burn yourself out working two jobs to do. This can actually be something that can like, oh my gosh. And go to school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all that just ran to my mind. I was like, well, some of the days you're off, you know, we say you don't have to overtrade or trade a lot. It's just the right trade. So I was like, the days you're that's don't have right. class or your workload is low those are the days you can hit the charts and you know mm-hmm. you can build that wealth and then it led to something deeper um for me because um as a kid i always wanted to play football yeah and it it was something i loved unfortunately i wasn't able to accomplish no excuse broke my leg snapped my leg in half and it just led me down a different way mm-hmm. um when i was younger but i always wanted to have football as a way to gain a platform so I could bring attention to the causes that I love and that are dear to me. And growing up till I was about 13, 14 in Boston, uh, Massachusetts, you see some things and you see some things that are lacking. And just the older you get, you see the lack of resources, or if you want to say to your community or in your area to really help with independence. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so then it became bigger than just my family. I know we say put the mask on you first and then go ahead and help others. So yes. yeah, so with that, um, my intent with my education and my continued pursuit is to be able to go like into a boys and um, boys and girls club. Yeah. You know, to build relationship in those areas. Yes. You know, ap- after they play not overburn the kids but find a way to make it tangible to them that they can come in class two to three days a week mm-hmm. you know maybe they'll tell their parents to come over you know get enough yes. sponsorship so when they're when they're 18 able to you know legally trade you know you get funded and you can say here you've demoed you've done all these things mm-hmm. i want to start you off with the capital you need within your account that's what's up you know so so teaching those kids that independence because as we know, some people don't know if they want to go to college. Mm. You know, they're just in between, in between. They don't know if they want to go to the military. So many decisions to make, and most of them might be out of survival. And I just want to take that mentally mentally exactly. away. Yeah, you know, the, to be able to make an action. That they have a choice, not <laughs> something they have to do. So yeah, I agree with you there. Yeah, so I want to do, you know, if you want to go to college, it's something that you truly want to do. It will help you as far as your plan and your goal to build the structure 
and get the education that you need. So with that, I was looking to, am going to, not looking, but am going to do that um, mm -hmm. soon in the future and just build that platform. And then also uh, what's dear to me is because I've, I don't take it for granted that I have both my parents, had both my parents in my home. Oh. Both my parents raised in me. Mm -hmm. And being able, as they say, have a, a village to raise a child. I don't take it for granted that I was able to know both sets of my grandparents and host our aunts and uncles. So when I would yeah, see foster kids. Oh, or, gosh, yes. That's the there. power. Yeah, the power of that support, the power of that love. Mm -hmm. um, and to see people not have it and to look at foster kids and know that um, just, you know, seeing documentaries or things that are presented on TV that I believe they have to leave when they're like 18 years old yeah. and things of that nature. And, yeah. you know, I'm not saying things aren't set up, but, you know, I believe once you lose that structure or if it's not there, it can lead you down a, a survival, as you we said before, a survival path. So I would love to build relationships with foster homes where I can go in and teach kids from 10 or, you know, as early as mm -hmm. possible as long as they're interested. Yes. And I mean, if you give them a four year education before they have to make that decision, they have a whole skill that they can provide for themselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, my God. That would change the trajectory of their entire life's direction. Because when you're in foster mm -hmm. care, it's like nobody wants me kind of thing. And the older they get, the less they likely they are to be adopted. So that that empowerment alone is huge because then they don't have to resort to the negativities of the street to make a living, but they can have a choice, an alternative that can boost them to do other things that they can focus on their gifts and their talents and develop them knowing that financially they can take care of themselves because they have a skill. And if they want that to be their skill and to be a teacher of that skill themselves, they're already entrepreneurs right out the gate. That is amazing. I'm looking forward to yeah. seeing and, and living long enough to see that vision come to pass. And that <laughs> won't be long because the need is going to come up Real quick. Real quick. Real quick. A hundred percent. Yes. And it goes to that model that we learn, you know, each one, reach one, each one, teach one. Yes. So I believe if you impact one enough, they'll go try to impact those in their surroundings also. Absolutely. And then lastly, uh, at the moment, what I've written down for my vision is um, I know it takes some legalities or working out, but even for the people that are incarcerated. Yeah. I know they would have to work out the details of things of that nature, but but to give a chance for somebody, regardless of the time or if they're getting out 10 years, 15, whatever it is, mm -hmm. to be able to teach them a skill that they can pass down an inheritance to their child. Absolutely. That they might not be able to always be there, but there's something that you can build legacy wise for them that you can hand over to them that they know regardless of your situation or what you have done in that place you were on their mind yes and you were diligent to do what you could while you were in you know doing your time mm -hmm. and being able to present a gift to your child and i just believe uh, that would be life-changing Yes, it would. Uh, another and way for your children. Oh, see, that's what we're talking about when it comes to generational wealth development and wealth preservation. That would bring such a wholeness, especially to that father or that mother, because we have women that are incarcerated too, but it would give them such a yeah. addition to their wholeness in their development, knowing that I'm a, acquiring a skill that even when I get out, regardless of what time that is, that I can stay on my feet because I would have had an opportunity to develop something. And then I'm still able to contribute to my child, whether it's graduations, birthdays, whatever, and, and not feel that they are shortchanging their child, so to speak, by being inside. It's, it's bad enough that they're absent physically, 
but to know that they can contribute to their development, you know, taking care of them even on the inside, that is so, so important. I think that would help with their esteem, their worth, their character. It would probably even aid in their conduct so that they're getting out maybe with good behaviors and different things of that nature. When you give a skill, when you teach a skill, you give a person hope that they can make something of their lives, even though they made a mistake, because all of us have made a mistake. All of us just didn't get caught. <laughs> oh, come on now. Let's keep it real. We just didn't get caught. Uh -huh. But since they did get caught, just give them an opportunity, you know, more than a second chance, because some people need more than a second chance, just a chance, you know, however many times that needs to be. But that is amazing. I know that's going to come to fruition because coming up to my next question is going to definitely let our audience know how you can actually carry this thing out. Share with us how you became the deacon, the bishop of the Meg Millionaires Marketplace Ministry and one of the kings of the Manit Exchange Group with the Crypto Fathers. Share with us that journey. Yeah, it's um, it it always starts with intent. Um, you know, we were introduced to a platform um, called Daisy. Uh, where we had a call that introduced us uh, to Mr. Trills and the Manit Exchange Group, and they started offering education. Uh, I believe it says my people perish for a, a lack of knowledge. Yes. And again, I personally, I did not go to college. I can't say I love like all that studying and, you know, I like the subjects I like, um, but I, I had to make a choice. It was either um, use my money at the time just to go do whatever or invest in myself. Yes. And start to build this esteem of myself back up. Uh, because after a while, you just get to the place like you don't know when you're going to be able to retire. You know, you might start just slowly weakening and giving up. So I said, this is a way for me to gain an education. And from signing up with um, just a stock and options class, great teaching. Um, and then you start getting your other battle buddies, your brothers and sisters that are like-minded in the same pursuit as you. And before long, you know, you just start building relationships and you see the integrity yeah. of, you know, the magnet and them trying to educate you. They're not trying to fleece you. They're not trying to give you this hype machine that, oh, this is going to happen. Yes. Um, but they, they give you, it brought me to a place to gain tools. So. I started with stock and options Then I didn't know much about crypto. And then they offered crypto education and, you know, you see the wave of the future coming and, oh. and you know nothing about it. So they, you know, my intent is, okay, I, I made some profits off, you know, the things, the platforms that we were doing um, and the decisions I have made. And it was either, okay, just go spend this and blow this or let me reinvest in myself. Yes. And with that, just, you know, you build a bond. You start communicating. You start, and again, this is all during Zooms. Mm -hmm. all again, this Zoom. is all while, all, all Zooms. While, <laughs> while we're all still sort of lock, some locked down, some in different states where the guidelines are different. We really can't meet up. But just to invest that time with like-minded people and to see them build the build your trust back up within yourself yes. and to give you tips and things that truly just made sense. Like, uh, I believe, you know, the Bible says, uh, the sheep shall know my voice and the strangers, they shall not follow. Right. And it was just like the voice witnessed to me what, what I was trying to do for my family. Yes. And that just led to, you know, that the calls that they have in the, in Monday through Friday, uh, 10 a.m. to the Saturday, um, you, you see people who have really no need to do anything extra because they're okay, but giving of their time. And you see what I believe in is that servant leadership. And you start to just seeing 
that servant leadership and that drew me in even more. And then, you know, you just build a relationship with the marketplace on Sunday where you try to get your mind right for the week to go into your endeavors to build your generational wealth. And you just, you know, you just start flowing. You, you give your insight on feedback and somehow I guess they, what I was saying sounded good. <laughs> Listen, look, man, audience, let me share something with you that he's just kind of sliding through. Our, our kings take turns in, in just sharing, as he was saying, the information that they have been privy to um, come in contact with, with their connections, their mentors, and things that they have learned over the years in doing business. And excitingly, we got one more king, and then we're going to have all the kings on a panel. Oh, my gosh, that's going to be awesome. You don't want to miss that. But you got to stay tuned to the show to find out when it is. But it's real soon. And I'm here to tell you, everybody says what they need to say. And DT just sits back and he just takes it all in. He absorbs it like a sponge. Oh, my gosh. His retention is amazing. And God just pours into him insight, foresight, wisdom. And when he comes out with what he says, it's like nobody can follow him after that. So that's why they always put him at the end because he just seals it. Oh my God. It, it's, it's like you're making this delicious meal and you, you saute the meat and and you season the vegetables just right, and you got all the right accents of, of foods with it, and you got the right beverage to go with it, and then the, you, you digested that meal, and it was all so good, and then here comes the dessert, and it's your favorite dessert, and the meal was just light enough and satisfying enough that you have more than enough room for that dessert. That's David Terry. He's the dessert. He comes in and he just finishes off the meal. And it's like, oh my God, what did this man just drop? And it, it has to come from God because with whatever his personal intimate relationship with God and, and the connectivity, the magnetic attraction with the man in exchange group and everybody sharing, it just pours out of you everything that's in you. And he just comes out with pearls and, and golden nuggets and wisdom that you can actually apply, that you can use, that gets your mind thinking and putting it in right perspectives and right insights. And, you know, I hadn't thought about it like that. And it was like, oh my gosh, we, we call them bars. Everybody just come up with all these bars, man. And it's like, oh my gosh, it, it's, it's nothing short of amazing. That's why you have got to come to our Madden Exchange Group at 10 a.m., Monday through Friday. The Zoom number is 924-039-3360. And even before that, if you want to start off your morning, you can catch us with Life-Changing Alliances at 404-333-8430. I'm telling you, within that window of time, you are set and on lock for your day. We have people that are listening on their way to work and you know, on their break times or, you know, whatever they can do. And I'm telling you, we get fed every day, seven days a week. Our university call is at 12 noon, same number, 924-039-3360. Then Marketplace Ministry, we come back in the afternoon and just be ministered. And, and DT and I, we had shared with the group a couple of weeks ago, and it was like, we had to listen to the tape again ourselves because it's like, wow, God said that to us. It was awesome. Oh, my goodness. And it was on our Mr. Trillian's birthday, no less. So we were truly honored to have that privilege. Yeah. And he thought, you know, that God touched his heart to, to, to let DT really minister to him on his birthday. So it, it's, it's an awesome community to my audience. It is an awesome, awesome community that you definitely want to get connected to. And we highly recommend that you come and join us so that you can be privy to this education because ma'am, sir, what's getting ready to come down the pipe in the next six months to a year 
you are going to want to come into our ark because that is what we're building. We're building an ark. We have uh, our King William III. He is like our, we call him our financial Noah because he, he just, every day, he gives us a message about what's coming. He gives us that because God says that he never leaves his children in the dark. He will always reveal. We say that scripture, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has it entered into the heart what God has prepared for those that love him. But if you read that next verse, it says, but I will reveal it to my saints. I will reveal it to my children. So we get, we are privy to this information, to this research that is revealed to them as to what's going on in the financial world globally, as well as our local governments. And it gives us the ability to prepare our arcs for our families in the financial platforms that we are giving, ed getting education for. And we're making our own decisions as to what we are connecting ourselves to. We are taking full responsibility for our choices and our decisions and developing our financial portfolios. And I'm here to tell you, it is nothing short of amazing. It is exciting to know that regardless of what happens, we are going to be in that ark. We are going to be in the land of Goshen. And we want to get this word out to everybody. Please, ma'am, please, sir. You need to come and get the information. It's out there. If we, we've been confessing that, that the wealth of the wicked laid up for the righteous, well, that transfer is here. That transfer is now. And you need to find out how to acquire it. It's been in plain sight to us, but for whatever reason that it was hidden, it is now being revealed openly. And we are here at the Man in Exchange Group to help you navigate through developing your generational wealth and wealth preservation for you and your family. With that being said, DT, give us one business strategy and tip that you would like to leave with our audience for today. Oh, man. I was just sitting here just listening to you and thinking about this journey and you have to be pre prepared to be rewired. Yes. It doesn't mean the electricity isn't flowing. It just means it's not getting to the right spots. There's um, a blip in the wire. There's a short somewhere. Mm -hmm. So just be ready to be rewired. Um, stay around those that are in pursuit of what you're in pursuit of. Yes. Um, I don't talk uh, really if you're not, if people aren't in the space and it's not treating people as they're beneath or below, but I need people that are, know what might come up, the difficulties, the ups and downs, yes. and I can talk to them and they keep me sort of fortified within the pursuit of the goal that I'm trying to obtain. And I would just tend to continue to say, uh, one of my favorite scriptures, and I look at it so different now when it says little becomes much in the master's hand. Yes, it does. Oof. Yes, it does. I just want to, I just want to say stick with your, your mentors, whoever they are, stick in the pursuit of the education. Uh, Cause you might not think you have the capital or things like that, but what you do have, you'll be able to be fruitful and multiply with it when you become a master of your craft. Absolutely. But nobody can turn a dollar into even adding 50 cents to it. You'll be able to turn that dollar into 15 cents. When people are only able to stay with one property, you'll find a property that you'll start out with and you'll be able to run that into four or five properties. Yes. Trading, things of that nature, I would just say just, please focus on as my one of my saying is don't chase the bag gain the skills that produce the bag yes oh my gosh i love that oh my goodness yes 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 and i'm 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 going to relinquish one of your quotes that i like so much that i hear you say often too start with the end in mind and know that you have everything you need to start right now. You have everything you need to start right now. Remember, trust your journey. 
The adventure is calling. Will you answer? And know that you did not wake up today to live in mediocrity. So count your blessings and have a wonderful, finished, strong Friday. Go into your weekend knowing that you have done what you needed to do in your business, your organization, your ministry, whatever it is that you are given that stewardship over. As DT said, little becomes much in the master's hand. Trust him and know that he's going to order your steps and guide you and lead you. And I know that he will lead you to the manningexchangegroup.com. Come and join us. Check out the information that I have given you in the early part of this show. In the beginning, my YouTube channel is Lady Vern, L-A-D-Y-B-R-N-E. Like, subscribe, hit that notification button and hit the bell so that you can get these shows into your feed. And I guarantee you they're going to come right and you're going to listen to something that you needed to hear right today. So with that being said, thank you so much, DT, for joining us. See what I mean? He took that from what he closed hey. with. He took from what I said. We go through this every day. I love it. You're missing out if you don't come. I'm trying to Ooh. tell you. The boy got the good. Uh, and lady, one of my favorite and lady L. You always bring the sauce for my ribs. <laughs> and lady L, I do want to just simply say thank you so much for allowing me to be on your platform. Um, I don't take it for granted um, that you would even think of me to even come share on your show. Um, and I do want to thank, say thank you more uh, and more that thank you for not giving up on you. Yes. Thank you for not giving up on your vision. I know you've been in it a long time. I know there's been ups and downs. And I just want to say thank you because if you wouldn't have continued to go, where you know you're destined to go and pursue. I wouldn't be here on this today. And I just wanna thank you for all the lives that you have affected, all the lives you have changed and all the lives you will continue to change. And I thank you just for allowing me to be on the startup of one of the biggest podcasts that God has ever created with Lady L. So continue to be blessed, continue to do his work, continue to go to your Canaan. Remember, it's called Canaan first, and when it was the right time to go in, it was called the land of milk and honey. Yes, so sir. make sure, stay faithful, and make sure you get that milk and honey. Absolutely. Thank you so much, King. Appreciate you. Bye-bye for now, audience. Thank you for joining us today. Be blessed, everyone.